Have you ever wondered how good a knitter you really are? Are you a beginner, an intermediate knitter, or maybe even a master knitter? Of course, knitting can be a solitary hobby and often there's little chance for comparison. I actually suspect that a lot of knitters are much better than they think they are. So that's why I developed a fun little story for you. And as I tell this story, I will use and talk about more and more and more advanced techniques. And this is the way this works. When I mention a technique or a skill you don't fully grasp yet, then the level that came before, that is your knitting level. So grab yourself a cup of tea, hot chocolate, coffee, whatever you prefer, and let's find out your knitting skill level together. You embarked on this knitting journey many years ago, or maybe only just a couple of months. And maybe it was your mom, your aunt, your grandmother, or even someone here on YouTube who showed you how to string loops around your knitting needle and start knitting. Maybe a long tail cast on, or maybe a single cast on. And then the same person also showed you how to do the knit stitch. How glorious a feeling! Suddenly you could turn a mere strand of yarn into fabric. Something squishy, soft and full of texture. You also had to learn how to bind off because as you soon noticed, knitting can unravel at any time and all your hard work was for nothing. Very soon someone also taught you how to knit the purl stitch. It felt somewhat awkward at first, you might even have hated it a bit, but suddenly you were able to produce a stockinette stitch, the same pattern you see on most sweaters you can buy at the store. You also learned how to knit ribbings, a super stretchy knitting stitch pattern perfect for that first scarf you might have knitted. But knitting is not a straightforward journey, mistakes happen but gladly you learn that you can fix them with a crochet hook. By then you also learn that you can combine your knits and pearls in many other ways and produce fascinating patterns like moss stitch, seed stitch, waffle stitch and so much more. The possibilities seemed endless. But what would knitting be without color? So you learned how to join in a new ball and knit stripes. In that process, you also learned two more essential skills that finally enabled you to finish garments. Someone showed you how you can use a tapestry needle to weave in the ends in an invisible way. But it didn't stop there. You also learn that you can sew two pieces together in an equally invisible way. With mattress stitch, you were finally able to turn a flat project into something well-rounded. How amazing was that? By then, it was time to reach for more. You wanted complex shapes and not only squares and rectangles. So you learned your first decrease. Knitting two stitches together enabled you to structure your fabric. And you quickly also noticed that there was a corresponding increase. By making a stitch, you were able to let your knitting get wider. Compared to other knitters, your skill set might still have been limited, but you had everything it took to finish some lovely projects and knitting really started to bring you joy. By now you wanted more. So you learned how to read simple patterns and follow written instructions from a designer. You also noticed that your stitch definition got much neater. Looking back at your first pot holder or dishcloth, you definitely started to be proud of your work and maybe even knitted your first little gift. By that time you became hooked and you wanted to improve. 
you wanted your knitting to look even better. So you learned a skill to knit neither edges, like always slipping the first stitch of every row pearlwise. You also learned that increases and decreases come in pairs and can be either right or left leaning. And even though you might not have fully understood why that is yet, you noticed that patterns will use knit two together and SSK slip slip knit to form an even decrease line on both sides. And you learned all these new stitches one at a time. As for increases, make one right and make one left awarded you with similar neat lines. Now that you were reasonably secure in your knitting, you felt ready to explore more ways to create exciting fabrics. A simple cable needle allowed you to knit complex looking patterns that were actually remarkably easy to knit. At about the same time, someone also showed you a simple color work technique. For most knitters, that probably was fair isle. A simple technique where you carry the unused color along on the backside to create stunning patterns. But it could also have been a two colored fisherman's rib or the bobble stitch where you skip or lift certain stitches to turn your stripes into something that spells wow. You might not have been proficient with these techniques yet, but you knew they existed and the possibilities they represented. Emboldened by the advances you made, you finally felt ready to tackle your first project in the round. My, did that feel scary. Working with a set of five needles at the same time, one might as well juggle with raw eggs, or so you thought. Well, but you wanted to knit your first real sock or hat, and so you practiced hard either with double pointed knitting needles or the magic loop technique and finished your first tubular project. My, what an elation, no nothing could stop you. By now you knitted quite a couple of projects. Some of them turned out okay, others were good learning experiences, but some of them were really polished. Part of that success were two realizations. That gauge swatch that everyone kept talking about and how important it is, well, you finally followed that advice and realized that just casting on without checking your gauge first is maybe not always the best idea. You also learned that blocking, so soaking your finished project in lukewarm water for 30 minutes or more, adding mild soap and then carefully pinning it to a soft surface before you let it dry, dramatically improved the appearance and stitch definition of your projects. But your learning experience certainly didn't stop there. You also learned more complicated stitches, like working a stitch through the back loop. You realize that there is not only one way to bind off or cast on stitches and found new methods to create a stretchier or more beautiful edge. While your first attempts to increase stitches might have yielded holes, by then you also mastered a couple of more advanced increase or decrease techniques that reduced the problems significantly. As you progressed along your knitting journey, you also knitted more and more patterns and not just self-drafted scarves. And gradually you learned how to read your knitting. You could not only tell a knit stitch apart from a purl stitch, but you could also identify those yarn overs and spot where you decreased. This also enabled you to fix more complex mistakes either by unraveling, using a lifeline, reverse knitting or with a crochet hook. By now you felt very secure and comfortable with knitting and you learned to knit one of the many famous advanced knitting patterns. Maybe it was lace, maybe it was brioche or maybe you challenged yourself with a complex cable pattern like an Aran sweater or so. In that process you also learned how to read charts and felt comfortable around them. 
They opened up a whole new world of knitting and you reveled in all the newfound possibilities. It was difficult at first, but after three or four projects, where you really leaned into learning how to read charts, they didn't feel complicated anymore. In fact, it made things easier. But your journey certainly didn't stop there. You wanted yet more. And that's when you delved into the art of advanced color work. This could have been in Taja, two-colored brioche, double knitting, mosaic knitting, or a complex pair aisle design that required sticking. You also learned that crochet or embroidery could easily enhance the quality of knitting and you realized how important it is to delve a bit into the other needle crafts. So with a little bit of patience and practice and after having put your new skills to test, you finished quite a couple of colorful projects that family or friends and need so much, they ask you to knit one for them as well. By now, you called yourself an experienced knitter. You finished more than just a handful of projects and your stash was gradually growing without you even noticing it. You knew quite a lot of knitting techniques and those you didn't know you could easily look up and learn without much trouble. By that time you also noticed yourself specializing. While certainly you tried to knit most of the standard projects at least once socks, sweaters, hats, scarves, blankets or toys, one of them brought you the most joy and you really started to focus on that. Or maybe it was for aisle projects or fancy cable projects that you had the most fun with and your skill knitting them increased by leaps and bounds. Even though it was certainly a gradual change, people started to compliment you on your stitch definition and the polish of your work. When knitting in the round, the fear ladders were of no concern anymore and you actually wondered why people thought it was a problem. It all was so easy and simple, right? You just pulled a little bit here, relaxed a little bit there and that was it. Didn't even require thought. And of course, it was a matter of picking the right yarn. And by now, you had enough experience to substitute the yarn recommended for a pattern according to your preferences and budget. And you knew which fibers, spinning techniques, dyes and so on works best for which pattern. And the same could be said about needles. You knew which pattern required blunt or sharp needles and whether metal needles or needles with a little bit more friction were called for. But to be quite frank, by now you didn't really follow these patterns word for word anymore. You were making your own adjustments along the way. Sometimes a pattern was reduced to mere inspiration and you combined it with a different pattern or your own preferred way to knit socks or sweaters. The results were garments that really fit the way you preferred it almost every time. You also noticed how you needed to look less and less at your knitting. So much of it happened subconsciously. From there, it was only a short step to designing your own pattern. You had a firm grasp of most basic knitting constructions like sweaters, socks, hats or shawls to help you in that process. And your vast knowledge of knitting stitches and knitting stitch patterns helped you embellish them according to your preferences. Most importantly, you really knew how to adjust any pattern to accommodate a larger bust, wider shoulders, a little belly, a high instep or a thicker calf with ease and skill. Shaping and not just letting negative ease do the job became second nature. Occasionally you still had to look up certain skills or patterns but mostly that was just to confirm what you previously learned. You felt firm in your knowledge and answering questions from other knitters, even teaching, was something that you started to feel very comfortable with without having doubts or second thoughts.
you were able to knit simple designs and patterns without constantly looking at your needles. Maybe you watched TV or just gazed out of the window. But you also learned about your limits and strengths and masterfully knitted projects within these constraints to the acclaim of most people around you. You also heard about other knitting traditions from around the world and tried at least once. Maybe English, maybe continental knitting, maybe Portuguese or Eastern knitting. But it sure opened up new possibilities for you. By now, knitting has become a significant part of your life. Possibly even helps to create some income. These days, people ask you more and more for your advice and you gladly share it. You can give helpful pointers and further options whenever asked and whenever you think they make sense and add value. To you, knitting is no longer just a hobby but an art form and you revel in it. You even make up your own stitches. For example, a better way to knit a left-leaning decrease or a unique way to facilitate knitting in the round. You truly understand the four fundamentally different ways to knit a stitch with all their permutations and how the endless possibilities of knitting are a mere afterthought of that simple insight. No longer do you just design your own projects by building upon the traditional plain vanilla patterns. You significantly improve them according to your preferences by picking a fundamentally different way to knit those shoulders or the heel of those socks. Of course, you are proficient with all major knitting techniques, lace, stranded knitting, brioche, cables and so on. By simply looking at the picture of a design, you are able to recreate it, even though, and knowing how much work went into creating it, you certainly do honor the effort of the designer all that much more and still buy the pattern. In short, you are an accomplished master knitter. Wow, that was a lot, wasn't it? How far into the story did you make it? Comment with your score and your thoughts. But of course, I can't leave you alone with this little test, at least not without further comment. The first thing I absolutely want you to know is that for most people, knitting is a hobby. There is nothing wrong with not knowing a certain technique yet. The fact that there is still more to learn, still new possibilities to explore, should be celebrated and never used to diminish your worth. The most important part is that knitting brings you joy and if it does, then you already mastered the single most important step on your knitting journey. Knowing how to knit a fully reversible brioche double decrease certainly isn't required to knit with joy. The second thing I really want you to know is that I made up this scoring system myself. There is no global knitting council or so that define these levels. So definitely take this video with a grain of salt. At the same time, that doesn't mean that there is no value. If I ever were to create a knitting course from beginner to master knitter, then these are the steps I would probably follow. And actually, I have been gradually building a huge free portfolio of tutorials for all the skills I mentioned in this video here on my YouTube channel and on my, there's more on my blog to help you on that journey. And in fact, if that is something you are interested in, then consider becoming a patron. By supporting my work on Patreon, you can not only help me put out more content for you, there are also very advanced tutorials available for my supporters with knitting tips and tricks beyond the ordinary that will help you tremendously on your way to becoming a master knitter. And just as important, I want you to know that knitting is certainly very far away from a linear craft. Beyond casting on the knit stitch and a bind off, there is no set sequence or order you have to learn all these skills and techniques. 
And you probably notice that you might know certain techniques or have certain skills that I rank much higher. So maybe you are only a beginner, but you already know a lifted increase or so. How awesome is that? I know very accomplished knitters that never touched color work or knitting in the round. And I know some people who knit the most amazing and intricate lace, but only do it in garter stitch because they hate purling. So in the end, I hope you understand that this video is mainly a selection of skills that are up for the grab, so to speak. And you decide what you want and need to learn and what you want to skip. Pave your own path. Neither I nor anyone else can and should tell you what brings you joy. And I guess this brings me to my last little message. The number of years you have been knitting has little to do with your skill level. So often I hear things like, I have been knitting for 30 years and is a kind of argument to underline your authority. So to tell you the truth, I know knitters who have been knitting simple pot holders for 30 years. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. At the same time, it doesn't mean just because you have been knitting for decades, you know everything about knitting. Stay humble and if someone has a question, provide them with options and encouragement. Don't reprimand beginners or act superior or tell them there was just this one best way to do this that will never be able to create a fruitful learning environment. Besides, ultimately, becoming a master knitter means you have left the beaten path and found your entirely own way of knitting. Anyway, that's it. Please like this video if you enjoy watching, comment with your feedback and your questions. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.